Let's talk about the three starter characters in the first Ascendant, which one you should choose depending on your playstyle, and then we are talking of course about the fourth and more or less secret starter character Bunny, where to get her and how she plays at the end of the video. Now let's jump immediately into the first one, Ajax, but before we do that, let me say this very quickly. I've been playing all of the four classes extensively in the multiple betas and playtesting they did, so I got a pretty good feeling on what to expect for those classes. And as I said, we are jumping now into Ajax, which is definitely one of the characters which is the most forgiving out of the four characters. Like you can make a lot of mistakes mistakes with him at the beginning without dying because he's very, very tanky. He's even classified as the tank, but do not underestimate his support and damage potential. He's not just a dude who stands in the front line and gets all the bullets in his face. He can actually bring a lot of firepower to the battlefield. So much so even that they had to nerf him multiple times in the baiters because he could literally one shot bosses. And that is thanks to his passive which is called Event Horizon, and every time he gets damaged or his uh, shields are getting damaged, he is acquiring Void Energy and he can enhance his abilities. And his first and ultimate abilities are shields. And when he is enhancing those, he is reflecting damage back to the enemy. And that was so broken that, as I already said, they had to nerf this dude. But don't you just think he's putting down shields? He also has a second and third ability, which is called Void Walk, which is like a jump right with a shockwave coming from it and then also expulsion which is also a huge shockwave going off of him and they can do massive damage especially if you put some points in um, attribute power right which is enhancing his abilities and that gives him a lot of clearing potential for a lot of enemies he's not as strong against single target enemies but again with his shields and reflecting damage, he is pretty good against bosses nonetheless. Uh, even though in the intro you see him wielding like a heavy weapon, uh, he is not really focusing too much on weapons, right? Like he's using weapons like every, every other descendant does, but um, he doesn't really have anything to enhance that. So you were focusing on tanking and using your abilities for a lot of AoE damage. What is important to mention for Ajax is that even though he is very forgivable for new players, positioning is key, not just for yourself, but also for your group, because when you put down your shields where people can find some cover under, they are there, right? You cannot just move them around. So you have to know where to put them and more importantly, when to put them down in certain events of the game. And that is something you have to learn. And this is where you can quote unquote fail a little bit. But believe me, when Ajax is in a group, a lot of people would just love to have him because he is so versatile and so helpful. And definitely the character where you cannot do anything wrong, whatever you are really doing with him. Now that leads us to the opposite, let's talk about Lepic. Lepic is your third person shooter character, right? If you have played any third person shooters before, then you know exactly what to expect from this guy. He is focusing on grenades, another grenade, and his ultimate is an even bigger grenade. This dude loves grenades, if you haven't noticed, and he can even enhance his grenades and his uh, standard weapon with overclock, which is then giving it um, a fire debuff. So whenever you were then shooting when overclock is active or you're using the ability, you will create a fire dot on the enemy, which is again, doing a lot more damage. With that said, Lepic is DPS. That means he is not really designed necessarily for the front lines. He can definitely hold his own. Like he's not dying immediately. He's not a glass cannon. He even has a passive which allows him to, when he normally would get fatal damage, he would not die, right? And then there's a cooldown and then you have to wait till that is coming up again. But this gives him a little bit of leeway and makes him more like a bruiser, brawler kind of character. Like he can definitely get hit, but he is not the frontline tank character. But with that said, he is a DPS and that's the only thing he brings to the team. 
So if you are going in a group, you have to deliver the DPS. There's nothing else you're offering for the team. And if you can't deliver that, then you are unfortunately not really helpful as a LAPIC, which leads us to Visa. Visa? Visa? I never know how to pronounce it. And she is the glass cannon mage, right? She has a lot of abilities, who does a lot of frost damage. And she is definitely the squishiest of all the three characters. She's still not what I would call a glass cannon. That is coming when we are talking about Bunny. But um, she's definitely the squishiest one. She has a few defense abilities, like a third ability is um no sorry her second ability is frost road which uh increases her running speed and her shields and also slows enemies which are walking on that path and so she has some defense abilities she has abilities she can stay away from and also more importantly she is also bringing some support abilities to the battlefield because every of her abilities is creating ice shackles which is also increasing your damage through her passive but it also slows down and freezes enemies in place which is amazing if you have to counter monster hordes and they are just standing around or not moving that fast which will help your team immensely so she's also bringing some pretty good debuffs slash support abilities to the group and she doesn't always has to go full damage now she is also completely focusing on her abilities she has nothing which is enhancing her weapons and the weapons are more like a in-between thing she is using when her abilities are on cooldown and now that leads us to the last and fourth character you are not immediately getting at the beginning of the game and that is bunny and you probably wonder well how do i get her well it's actually pretty simple just play the main story after you have defeated the first group boss of the first area of the game which is around level 11 level 12 something around that you will get a quest which will teach you how to get bunny you cannot miss it just follow the main story this would take you about two to three hours if you already know a little bit what you were doing if you're completely new to the game you take it slow it would take you about four to five hours till you are getting to bunny now let's talk about the real glass cannon in the group bunny is squishy as hell like she can dish out insane amount of damage i would even go so far to say that she is the highest dps class of all the uh, classes in the group but she has a very specific playstyle because she has to stay on the move she is literally sonic she is becoming faster and faster and faster and the more she is running around she is also creating electricity in her body she can then use to discharge and kill everything around her sounds amazing but that also means you have to stay on the run right the moment you are getting slowed down the moment you are getting stunned the moment you are get staying still you are pretty much dead if you are not careful right so you also have to utilize the abilities of your team to stay alive and you have to know when to basically show your face and when not to which leads us to her ultimate her ultimate is absolutely amazing it's basically an electricity kamehameha she is doing it looks amazing it does insane damage but it has one major drawback and that is she's slowing down like she's going down to like slower than walking speed when she's doing it so what you really want to do is you have to position yourself you have to use some shields of let's say ajax or you have to know that the enemy will not turn around to you and unload their weapons into your face that's the last thing you want because as i said bunny is is just squishy as hell but the damage she can just pull out off in second is just crazy so she definitely has a learning curve to it and you will probably die more at the beginning than you want to but the moment you master her she is insane like i would go even so far to say that she is one of the top dps classes uh, especially nuka classes in the game right now so with that said we are at the end of the video i hope this was helpful if you still have some questions let me know down below in the comments i will try to answer them uh, before the release and there will be more videos in the future of the first descendant if you enjoyed it please leave a like and also if you want to see more videos 
maybe you want to subscribe to the channel. We're also focusing on some other RPGs and survival games on here. So if that is your jam, you came to the right place. With that said, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe. Bye-bye.